So often when building out a web application, you need support for basically creating buttons that have various different variants and sizes and other properties you can pass in. And if you were to implement this self, it can get a little bit messy very fast, depending on how you do it. For example, here, I'm just doing normal string setups where you can kind of have some styles that are the base styles here. And then based on the variants passed in, you just append additional styles to them. And then that's what you show on the button here. And so all of this is to set up the styles object, which you can kind of pass to your button as a class name, which is used to display a subscribe button on the page. By the way, be sure to like and subscribe. Now there are different ways to do this. You could also use like the class names library to basically um, merge these together. You can use Tailwind Merge. But a cool library I'm gonna show you real quick in this video is called Class Variance Authority, which kind of does all this heavy lifting for you, right? So they give you an example of how you can do this with a button. So I wanted to kind of follow this and do the same approach with my little button I have in my app. And maybe you can learn something new from watching this. So the way this works is you bring in a Class Variance Authority. And then somewhere in your file, you can just define like your button styles. So I'll say CVA. And what we're going to do is we're going to define a base class, which would have all of our base styles. So down here, let's just go ahead and grab the rounded, the padding the Y and the padding X. And we can paste that in. So then inside the options, you can pass a variance like this. And then you can start defining some properties that will need to be passed into the button. So in our case, we have a variant property here and a size. So let's just go ahead and define variant. And let's also define a size. So inside of these two properties, you can now start defining the styles for what your variant is going to do when you were to pass in, for example, default, and then also secondary. In our case, just grab the default styles here. Now it does take in an array of strings instead of just a whole string. So that should take care of that one. Let's just do this one real quick. All right, now th same thing for size. I'm gonna go ahead and do small would be X small, and then medium would be X to medium. So now that we have this button variable up here, what I can do is I can actually delete all of this. Instead, instead of styles, I'm gonna say button. And I'm gonna call it like a function. And then we need to pass in the variant here and then also the size that would be passed in from our component. And I think I named this MG. Let me change that back to MD. So a quick recap, the class variant authority gives you a function. You can call that function with your properties. And then that's going to return you a tailwind string that's going to have all the proper things kind of set up for you, right? So based on if you did default or secondary, it basically takes this and combines it with this. And then you get a nice looking string. Right, so the second thing I want to show you is that instead of manually defining these properties here for using TypeScript, we're going to use a, we're going to use a type that's provided from this library like this, and you basically just pass it your type of the button that you have defined up here. And now by default, your button is going to take in those variants and sizes that you defined right here as well. So it just makes it a little bit easier and you can kind of pass those in. So now going back to where we use this, we can simply just pass in whatever you want here and then go back to the UI and we'll see that our button updates. The last short thing I want to show you is let's say you wanted to extend the styles. Like let's say over here, we want to pass in a class name and we actually just want this text to always be read no matter what. Okay, so how do we get this passed into that button component that we're kind of setting up? So we're going to go over here, we're going to say class name. And then we're going to go ahead and just pass in class name here. And as you can see, the button now has text of red. And they kind of outline how that works here. They basically have a built in class or class name inside of this class variance authority function which is basically going to allow to overwrite existing things that are in your component. Okay, So you can do this with styles and padding and whatnot. Yeah, that's all I want to show you. Overall, it's a really small library, but it is pretty useful. So definitely check it out. And by the way, this is the same library that's used under the hood with ShadCN. So if you understand this, you'll just have an easier time customizing your components. If you're using something like V0 to use AI to generate your components, it'd be a lot easier because you're going to see all this stuff and you'll be like, what the heck is all this? But hopefully now you kind of understand it's not as confusing as it might look. All right, that's about it. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to give me a like and a subscribe. And also I have a Discord channel. You guys are welcome to join. If you want to find a place to hang out and talk to some other developers and just ask questions if you're stuck. Other than that, have a good day and happy coding.